How can you predict the future? Well, you can start off with those moon cycles that we talked about <laughs> earlier on, but no, you, you can't. And that's the whole point of trading. Mark Douglas in his, um, in his book, Trading in the Zone, said that you, you don't need to, predict, to be able to predict the future in order to make money from the financial markets. You don't. All you need to do is identify levels where there might be buying or selling coming in, support or resistance. And if you, can, if get, if you get good at identifying levels where buying and selling are coming, uh, is coming in, then it's just a case of managing the trade. So if you buy into a level here, and then the market starts to bounce and, and start moving away from that level, then you just go into trade management. You don't know how far it's going to go, but you manage the trade. And so either you use targets and you start bleeding some profits off and taking some profits, or you start trailing your stop up behind price until at some point the price comes down and uh, triggers your, your trailing stop and, you're, and you've made money that way. So you don't need to know what's going to happen next. I, mean, I always find it funny when you see these analysts on TV trying to make predictions about where X, Y, the stock market's going to be in six months' time or 12 months' time. It's a fool's game, really, uh, but people love to, love to know that sort of stuff. What makes money is support, resistance, where buying and selling is taking place, where trends are, knowing when to hop onto those trends, and then just managing the trade out. Do you favour any particular technical techniques? Yes, um, I do. But I will also say that trading is a very personal thing. So I could sit here and tell you the techniques that I use, but then someone else could sit here who's a successful trader as well, and they could have completely different techniques. It's a very much, like I say, it comes down to your individual personality as well. And it's a very much a cliche because people say, oh, trading, trade according to your personality type. So what they mean by that is, are you a, um, a counter trend trader or you're a trend based trader? What, what suits you more? And so, yes, I have certain techniques, but for someone else, it could be completely different. So what do I like? One thing I have always used are things like moving averages. Now, some, there'll be someone else could sit here and say, I hate moving averages. But moving averages have always been good for, for me in that they help me to determine the trends and they act as, as support and resistance within those trends. And I find it's a very graceful way of looking at, um, at price action as well. So I do like things like moving averages, normal sort of support and resistance, technical support and resistance. Um, I don't use Fibonacci, I've used it in the past, but don't use that anymore. And so, Again, like I've talked about earlier on, you, you move a, with time, sometimes your, your trading develops and changes. And so, yes, I've used certain techniques in the past and I don't bother anymore because as you become more and more accomplished as a trader, you want to simplify it more and more. So you end up going full circle. In your early days and years as a trader, you try lots of different techniques and then you go full circle to the point where you, you try and get it to its most basic form and use the, the least amount of information that you can possibly use. Do you trade the news? Not directly, no. Because the thing with trading the news is that liquidity gets pulled by the banks if you trade in FX um, around key news announcements. So there was a key news announcement at 9.30 this morning. And what happens is the, the banks sort of take a step back and they don't provide the same liquidity. And so prices can, you can, you can be susceptible to getting slippage on your fields. So I don't trade the news directly, but after a news release has come out, then I might react in the, in the next 10, 15 minutes, half an hour later, once I, if I see a, a trend developing on the back of that news, then that could happen. So for example, we've got the big news out in this week that we're, we're speaking is non-farm payroll. It's one of the biggest news, economic news releases of, of any month. And on the back of non-farm payrolls, if the figures are great or, or real disappointment, that can really send uh, the markets into one trend or another. So usually, um, I would be watching the non-farm payrolls to see if a trend develops on the back of that. So yes, happy to look half an hour later or something like that, but news itself, no.